welcome back. Today we will have a look at the power supply panel. Um, we're going to measure all the voltages and we're going to replace the capacitors with some high quality capacitors to be able to measure the voltages. We need to stay connected to the other things. We do not need the cassette panel. But there are some voltages and grounds that are going through all those devices and you will not be able to um, measure everything if it's not connected. The service manual points out that you need to switch to CD to be able to measure everything. And that's clear because otherwise you would not be able to measure 5 volts from this little fellow here. You can see this in the circuit in figure 3 dash 1. In, in this case the power supply seems to be fine. What you might need to check if it's not, if it's not working, there are two fuses here that need to be checked and there are some fusible resistors they are marked with an exclamation mark in the service manual. Take care of them. Um, for unit number two, there was one fuse. This fuse here gone. Or well, maybe this one. I can let me, let me think about it. Yes, it, it, this fuse was gone. Um, also, the transistor here, which is needed to switch to f and enable 5 volts. And when we are going to measure the voltages, what you will see is that the voltages in the service manual are completely different to the voltages we measure here. They're all higher. So 9 volts might be 12 volts, although we already switched to 240 volts. So before it, it was even higher. There are some undocumented parts here. We will quickly realize when we flip over the panel um, that's not documented and there's also a fusible resistor which was gone on unit number two. Okay, then flip over the panel. Be careful of high voltages here. What I have done is to get a ground here that makes it a little bit easier we might want to put some isolation tape um, around to avoid creating a shortcut otherwise we might get a contact somewhere <laughs> that's not working be careful what you're doing don't touch anything here. <laughs> um, okay, switch on. The sound you heard was the CM2. And we are now able to measure all the voltages. Um, what else do we need? The service manual. If you take the service manual there, all the um, voltages are really documented quite well. Let us check one first for 7475, which is this little fellow here, on... We should have here 9 volts. And what do we have? 11.2. On its output, should be 5 volt, it's 5.6 and this one goes to the servo panel CD. So the voltages are a little bit too high even on the output. Um, best thing is to go through all of the numbers we can check here on 7477 on the emitter it should be 9.6, we have 11.2 on the collector, it should be 9 volt, we have 
again 11.2 of course we have and the basis should have 8 volt but has 10.4 they are all way too high and I recommend to go through all of them this is 7478 emitter uh, we are on the on the base it should be minus 9 it's minus 10 the collector minus 9 yeah of course minus 10 and emitter minus 10 it's minus 10.8 oh that's fine um 7479 again this is my minus 21 Oh, it's minus 15.6. I try to create screenshots um, afterwards and save it with the oscilloscope and add it to the video. On um, collector, it's minus 21.5, it's minus 16.4, and the emitter is minus 21, it's again minus 16.4. Okay. Um, another one is here. This is 7476. The collector 20 volt has 20.8. Oh, that's good. Um, emitter 20.5, 21.6 is it? And the basis 19.8 is 21.6. Last thing mentioned in the service manual is 7480 up here collector zero whoa oh zero no it's not zero it's 14.8 basis is 800 millivolt but okay I might not be able to switch that's that seems to be wrong and here is 500. Yeah, that seems to be wrong in the uh, service manual. And you need to take care. Sometimes the service manual is wrong. Even there are undocumented um, or parts undocumented. And you can see this here. Just verify this with the uh, service manual. It shouldn't be there. There should be some bridges. But there aren't. So. Well, what else you can you check before you before you start? Take a voltmeter and check the fuses, for instance. There's one here. Perfectly. That, that's usually what something what you're doing, <laughs> of course, first. Over. As I said, there are some fusible resistors. Uh, yeah, fusible resistors here. Um, let's find them. They are hard to find sometimes. Let me see. This is one. One ohm. That's fine. So just go through. That would be if the power supply is not working that would be one thing you should do first to check all of them this is the undocumented has four ohms and there are some others have a look at the service manual all with an exclamation mark all the resistors with an exclamation mark needs to be checked so all the voltages we checked all the transistors in the power supply panel it seems to be fine so what we're going to do next is to replace the capacitors and then we should be fine what do we need to exchange all the capacitors the panel itself i'm going to remove all the other cables makes it a little bit easier. Um, we need the capacitors. I already 
get them up all of my, my bag. Um, there's a, a file on a website where I can find all the numbers and where all the capacitors need to be placed. So I'm going to use this. Um, of course we need a soldier iron, something to remove all the old soldier parts. What else? A hot glue gun to place uh, all the huge capacitors that they are not uh, wobbling around. Uh, I need coffee. Oh. And <laughs> I've got a lamp with magnifier. So <laughs> for me that's important. <clears throat> okay. Take care of the polarity of the capacitors. This is very well displayed on the board. I also re-soldier the pins of the connectors to avoid cold joints. Let's give it a try, switch on.
what I forgot is the bridge. Between, I have a look. Between three and either one or two, it's both ground. Otherwise, the CD player is not enabled. Okay, John. So fine, that looks good. Let's see if there's any difference. There shouldn't be any difference. 5.2. Well, what it seems. Everything is fine. Okay, maybe. Well, yeah. Looks good. Do not enable. Ah. Don't switch on the machine. It's got too long in the CD mode since this little fellow is getting very hot. That was the power supply panel. I'm going to remove my, my ground cable. Um, capacitors, capacitors are exchanged. Everything is working on this panel. That's really good. So as I said, what was not working in unit number two, what was broken was the fuse. Um, so check all the fuses is two. You get easily a uh, replacement. Check all the resistors that are marked with an exclamation mark, since those are refusable uh, resistors, so they can break, and then other things are not working. Check the transistors. That's quite easy. The only thing you need is a, a meter which is able to measure diodes. Be aware that if you measure it inside the circuit, you're also measuring um, other things around. And in that case, might give you some, some problems. You can see this one here can be measured very fine. But sometimes um, there are other parts in the circuit and you're, and you're going to measure all those <laughs> other things like here. As you can see, we're now charging a capacitor in the background. If you want to be sure if it's working, then remove it. That's all for today. We've done a little bit, at least, so one panel is finished. As I said, next time the microcontroller panel, we are going to replace all the capacitors, um, put the ICs on a socket, and we need to check why the tape deck CPU is frozen. It seems to be fine. We have seen before that the the serial bus for the LCD was working, so that means that the CPU should be fine. There can also be a, a driver broken inside which for, for an input-output, but the ROM seems to be fine and the application and the firmware seems to be running. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time. Cheers.